Hey, what is up? It's Zach, your YouTube foot doctor, and today I've got the first look and performance review of the all-new Lotto Raptor Hyper Pulse 100. Now, Lotto has touted a lot of brand new tech in this shoe, from a new innovative upper, all the way to their collaboration with Vibram and the outsole, but I really want to see, is this shoe the best of both worlds? Is it a jack of all trades? Or is it just a bunch of tech in the shoe just for the sake of tech? So let's put it through the gauntlet and find out. And just heads up, Lotto did send me a pair of these in advance of their launch. However, this video is not sponsored in any way, shape, or form. I'm getting no money from them for doing this. And as always, my opinions are unvarnished and completely mine. Now getting into the uppers, the Raptors are a double layer mesh upper, which I really like because there's a lot of efficient air exchange. The shoe does stay pretty breezy while still maintaining a pretty good grip on your foot. You do feel really stable in this shoe going side to side or front to back. Now the next thing this shoe has is those pretty strategic Kurim inserts on the top of the shoe where you're gonna start to toe drag the most. I would have liked you to have seen just a little bit more dense on the medial side, maybe one continuous area of Kurim. However, what's really cool is the Kurim is actually diamond shape. So it actually cuts through the air a little faster. They're more aerodynamic. So I thought that was pretty cool. It's a nice little tech innovation, a little Easter egg there. And on the upper durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper on that Kurim layer, not even a millimeter of damage from the Dremel. So this does have a really excellent durability profile for anybody that's toe dragging or sliding on that medial side or even lateral side. Now the lace line is an outrigger lace line. As you can see here, these red tabs kind of cinch down. Now I do like integrated shoelace outs a little bit better, but what I did like on these was that Lotto kind of encase the tongue within that outrigger shoelace line so it really is giving you a super strong tie down especially on the top of your foot so you really do feel like you're kind of sucked into the shoe almost like a driver in a formula one car now the uppers were a little bit harder to break in than some other shoes in its class or in between classes. However, they were a lot more stable than upper say is like the Uber Sonic 4 or the Solution Speed FF2. So good and the bad there. Now on the midsole teardown, the Raptors have a massive 2.8 centimeter stack height, the 1.2 centimeter heel to toe drop. Now it isn't the massive stack that really interests me, is what that stack is made of. Number one, you get a TPU external base shank that runs around the lateral side and all the way into the medial side side of the shoe. You can actually see it here coming into the heel counter. Now you also have a combination ETPU and EVA first layer of the midsole. You can actually see kind of the razor marks on it where the air channels come through that allows it to compress and expand a little bit better. Now that mixture of ETPU and EVA is some of the same stuff that you see on Boost Foam and on Nike React Foam, which I really like because it does give you a little more elasticity. The one thing the Lottos have over top of that though is a open cell foam layer underneath, which gives you a little bit more of a dense elasticity. Now, why I like this is because in the Lotto Mirage 100s, the foam is really, really dense under your foot. So you get a ton of pop off of your step and a lot of speed, right? However, it's really not for everybody because that midsole foam can feel pretty rock hard to some people. And even some people in the comments and the community said, you know, they bought the pair because I did my review on them. They liked the speed aspects of it, but then they had to take it right back because it was just a little bit too intense for their foot. Whereas on the Raptors, you have that ETPU and EVA layer up here, that mixture layer. It is really nice and spongy, but also a little bit more reactive, no pun intended. So you're actually getting, like I said in the title, the best of both worlds here in that midsole. And the reason I'm waxing poetic on this midsole design is because it actually functionally works. If you look at the serve test, 31 and a half centimeters of serve height. Now these are really similar to the Nike GP Turbo and Babolat Jet Mach line. Now these are not nearly as bulky as the Nike GP Turbo and they're going to last a lot longer than the Babolat Jet Mach line. So as you can see, the shoe kind of runs right in the middle of those two designs of shoes, whereas the Babolat Jet Mach is more minimalist. The Nike GP Turbo is about as maximalist as you can get. And here's the Lotto Raptor Hyper Pulse kind of right in the middle. Now the outsole tread is a collab with Vibram. If you know anything about Vibram, they're most famous for minimalist running shoes. And if you make a minimalist running shoe where pretty much the only thing between you and the ground is rubber, it better be pretty darn good. Now Lotto and Vibram say that this outsole tread is 30% more durable. And on my durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, about a millimeter of damage, which is pretty much the same as every other durability focused shoe out there. Not as good as Nike Vapor Next or Vapor Cage 4, but just as good as every other other one on the market right now. Now this is a continuous herringbone pattern. You look at the medial side, pretty flat on the lateral side of the forefoot. It gets a little chunkier then it's flipped at the heel. That is to allow sliding on a hard court without going out of control. So it grips on the medial and lateral side of your heel and forefoot. Now this does come in a clay model as well. That'll probably be coming out later this year. You know, if you're into Formula One, 
these tires, I should say, I'm getting tired. The treads on these play like a medium to soft right in the middle compound tire, but they've got the durability of the harder compound tire, which is, I really like, which is great. I mean, Vibram does make great outsole treads, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're good for tennis, but they definitely did hit more of a home run on these treads. They really engineered them to actually grip well on a hard court, but also give you more of that durability. Now the one thing the Raptors have over the Mirages is a little bit of a more aggressive lateral flange. And you do really notice that on the suicide test. I found that the Raptors were a lot better on turns and kind of going side to side speed. However, the Mirages were a little bit faster going up and down front to back. However, for me, for tennis, I I kind of like the Raptors a little better than Mirages, just because going side to side you feel a little more stable because of that flange, and just the uppers are just a little more intuitive than the Mirages. However, if you're looking for pure speed, the Mirages still are just a little bit faster than these. However, these are no slouch when it comes to speed. Now the fit of the Raptors I alluded to a little earlier, the heel counter and ankle collar took me about two days to break in. However, the midfoot and forefoot didn't take me any time at all, even with my 2E with foot. It was really accommodating, a lot more accommodating than the Mirages, which are a little more hugging around your foot, a little more aerodynamic, whereas the Raptors are pretty expandable. Now, as you can see that Kurim tabs, whereas they would be more durable if it were continuous, since they're not continuous, it expands a lot easier for a wider foot or a wider forefoot. The one type of player I love for this shoe is someone that suffers from heel pain, ball of foot pain, or arch pain. Number one, because of the TPU shank. Number two, because of that reinforced rubber shank on the medial side. So your foot is being housed really securely by the TPU and you're getting a lot of reinforcement from the rubber as well as just the two layers of foam in the midsole. So if you're someone that suffers from any of those issues, this shoe is one to really look at. But most importantly, did the performance of the Raptors live up to all the tech that Lotto has been talking about that's in this shoe? Now, I will say for an all-court game, it really doesn't get much better than the Raptors right now. Number one, because of that two layers of foam, you do get an incredible snap off your first step, really explosive first move, especially moving side to side. So say if you're going out for a wide forehand, you got to push back to the other side of the court, these shoes are going to give you a ton of feedback, a ton of energy return. Now, when going front to back, say serving and volleying, something like the Mirage or like the Nike Vapor Pro is going to give you just a little bit more fluidity when going from front to to back on this shoe, especially just because there is just a lot going on in the uppers. However, for an all court game or even for a retriever type game, if you're moving side to side on the court whatsoever and you need a lot more stability on the court, the Raptors are just a phenomenal build of a shoe for someone that just needs the ultimate in stability, but still wants a little bit more speed. That's it, if you're looking for a shoe as nimble as the Ubersonic 4, this is actually a great middle of the road choice because it is gonna give you a lot more cushion than the Ubersonic 4, but just as much nimbleness and lightweight stability. So honestly, this shoe does fit a category that right now is being very underserved. Now, I know I've been comparing the Raptors to a lot of other shoes on the market today. However, it's just because they weave in between a lot of different lines of shoes. So if you're someone, let's say, wants to buy something like the Adidas Soul Court Boost, but you're like a lot of people in the comments that don't like the bulk of the Soul Court Boost, the width of the Soul Court Boost, or some of the fit issues of the Soul Court Boost, well, then this is going to be a great alternative. If you're someone that likes the Adidas Barricade, but doesn't want to wait for the new update of it and doesn't like the 18s like me, then this is also a great alternative. Lotto really designed this shoe to be that middle of the road shoe that's not the uber maximalist shoe, but that's not one of the most minimalist shoes either. And I think right now, especially in 2021, what I'm seeing a lot of is there's these shoes that are just in the monster truck category and then a bunch of other shoes that are in the minimalist category. And it seems like the Raptor Hyper Pulses, something like the Yonex Eclipse in three, the Diodora Blue Shield fives, all three of those shoes kind of fit right in the middle there. And that's why I think this shoe is going to fit so many players so well. But if I had to describe the Lotto Raptor Hyper Pulse 100 in one word, and by the way, that is a really long name for a shoe, it would be solid. It is just a solid all around construction, solid all around playability and just solid engineering. Now it's not going to be the most maximalist shoe you put on. It's also not going to be the most light and nimble shoe you put on. It's going to fit right in the middle. Like I've been talking about the whole video. It's going to take a little bit from both categories and it's just one of those shoes that is just a solid pick for just about every player and game style. Now, one other Easter egg I found in this shoe is the removable insole. Now, typically I don't care about removable insoles. However, this one is a dual layer, eight millimeter thick insole. Now, typical insoles are one layer, five millimeters. This is almost double that. So while the shoe is new before it does kind of bottom out a little bit, this is gonna give you a ton of cushion. 
But of course, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments. Do you think that all the tech that Lotto put into these is worth a second look, and more importantly, worth your money? Let me know down below. Now, I was able to get a discount code for the Raptors. It is not an affiliate code. I make no money off of it. I don't think gain or lose if you use it or not, but it is in the description if you want to check it out. Now, if you want to see how the Raptors stacked up against all the other new shoes of 2021, make sure you click on the playlist above and subscribe down below. I'll see you in the next video.